Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Adventure Guide. And we're about to delve into a three-part series based on the Goatman of Texas. Now, you've probably heard of Goatman's Bridge or the Popelik Monster, any of these Goatman stories. But I can tell you right now, there's a town in Texas that blows those things away. I cannot believe that there isn't a million videos on this one town. At least half of the population there has gone out searching for this thing. And a large number of those people have had encounters. There's an actual underground section, a tunnel, that they go into and they encounter this thing. I will reveal this location, where to go and how to see it, in the third episode. Now this episode will be the least exciting of the three. The last one will astound you, as I said. It'll blow Goatman's Bridge right out of the water. But in this episode, we're going to cover South Texas and East Texas Goatman sightings. Starting off with Eagle Lake, Texas. Back in 1976, several stories made it into the Eagle Lake Headlight newspaper. The paper claimed that there were rumors that a goat man came from a home in Matthews, Texas. He is reported in the paper as, quote, tall, hairy, and also possesses amazing strength and agility. In this area, the goatman was known to stop or attack cars. During one incident, the driver was on a lonely part of the highway when he saw a figure running towards him. The driver had to slam on his brakes to avoid hitting this person, which seemed hell-bent on committing suicide. As the car slid to a halt, the driver looked up to see a goatman in the headlights. It ran to the side of the car, and unsure if this thing was going to open the door and attack him, the driver decides to floor it. But at the same time, quote from the newspaper, the goatman grabbed a tire off the car and pitched it deep into the woods. The goatman then ran off and no more details were given in this report. This encounter is believed to be the same one that's reported by another person on Highway 3013 where the highway goes over the San Bernard River. The goatman had jumped on the bridge from below and blocked the way. There were no more details either on that account. The next account from the newspaper was that there was this carload of people that was driving near Eagle Lake and all of a sudden, the car slowed down tremendously, almost giving the passengers whiplash. They looked out the back window to see this goat man had grabbed hold of the bumper and then eventually just let them go. The last report in this newspaper was that a man had heard his doorbell ring. He opened the door to witness an entity in the form of a goat man. It demanded the man serve him food, but the man either refused or was too scared to move. So the goat man pushed his way in and took the meat from the refrigerator. It then departed, but quote from the newspaper, three days later, the man's black hair turned snow white. All right, from Eagle Lake, we leave the area and we go to the reports of a goat man in Baytown. In 2019, a Reddit user named Locate told about the problems in the 1960s and 70s on Tri-City Beach Road, also known as 2354. He stated, quote, I grew up east of Houston, down by where the San Jacinto River meets the ship channel, the bays, and eventually the gulf. There were numerous sightings during my childhood of the Goatman. He was rumored to mostly live off of a dirt road outside of town that ran through a forest area on the other side of the bay following close along the other. Another account about a fisherman, Ray, is, quote, A fisherman at the bridge took his chances with the gators and moccasins when he turned around he saw a goatman between him and his car. Ray jumped into the Cedar Bayou channel for safety and made an angry deep howl sound as it paced back and forth above Ray. Then a car came down the road and it bolted into the forest. Ray believes it may have had chicken legs. From Baytown, we jump northeast to La Porte. In this town resides a place called Goatman's Road. To find Goatman's Road, you take Spencer's Highway to 16th Street then head north on 16th Street till it dead ends. When you come to the gates, this is Goatman's Road. You park at the gates, crack your windows, and begin talking with your friends. Listen from time to time for it to make a bawling sound. Several reports are that it will attack your car. If you feel extra brave, you can take the run for your life challenge and simply get out of the car and walk up the road on foot during the night. When you hear the bushes move, run and run fast. 
No one has seen it running after them, but many swear you can hear hooves coming up behind you fast. Now we move on up to Kingwood, Texas, just north of Laporte. There are no spectacular stories to report here, but so many people in the area have claimed to see the Goatman. All sightings have taken place on Dunham Road. I have not heard of any recent sightings, but it was once a hot spot and still may be. From Kingwood, we jump northwest to Huntsville, Texas. Here on Bowden Road, aka Demon Road, there are many bad encounters that have taken place and cars being chased by aggressive red orbs. There was a report further down the road away from Martha Chapel Cemetery and over near where Bowden Road and Robinson Creek Road intersect. A goatman as tall as a cow, pale glowing white, running on all fours and so emaciated that its ribs protrude clearly through its skin. It was seen running down the road away from cars, not towards them. The car that the eyewitnesses were in quickly accelerated on its own after the encounter. This thing had ran off the road and down a trampled game path in the grass and into a thicket nearby. It was not a cow. From here we jump west just a bit over to Bryan College Station. To find this demonic lair of the Goatman, Take Wellborn Road south out of College Station till you get to the town of Wellborn. Turn right where the Wellborn Grocery Store is, heading west on Dowling for just about 50 feet or so. Just as soon as you cross the railroad tracks, turn left on Cope Bridge Road. Drive on this road for about two and a half miles, then turn left on Bats Ferry Road and take it to the end. The person who gave me directions to this location gave me no details, but said if you're there, you're in deep SHIT and shouldn't have gone. Good luck. There is chatter on the internet to verify that there has been other encounters there. Now we're off northeast to Normangy, Texas. I don't have an exact location, but in January of 2022, a lady named Jan reported, quote, I was awakened at night by my dogs as they barked fiercely outside my bedroom window. I sat up in my bed and looked out my window where the outside light was sufficient for my viewing. I was very shocked as to what I saw. There was a goat man creature walking around under my pecan tree while my dog steadily nipped at its heels. The creature was about seven feet tall standing upright as a man with slightly curved shoulders with the horns and hooves of a goat. His hands were slightly curled with some very nasty gray fingernails, but his skin was a yellowish green color with sparse hair all about his body. Its legs and body were that of a man. I didn't see him straightforward, but caught a glance at the side of his face, which was nearly the shape of a man's. I can say I was shocked and afraid, but the goat man never turned and looked at me and busied himself to walk faster away from my dogs. From time to time, I can hear the sounds of a goat calling in the night. Strangely, we do not have any goats in this area of Normangy, Texas. Only cattle. From Normangy, we're going to head over to Beaumont, Texas, and just north to Silsby. Old timers used to park in front of Gore Cemetery. Just to the west of the cemetery is a place fishermen call Goat Necks Bend, an old oxbow lake that at times connects to the Natchez River. It was named after seeing the Goatman near this spot. However, it has been a running tradition to park your vehicle at the cemetery. Place an offering of food or drink on the stump outside of the cemetery, then sit quietly with the windows down and listen. One person had their ankle grabbed and pulled into the dirt. From Silsby, we head north to Marshall, Texas, where we cover the last location on this episode. But the next episodes coming up will amaze you. But with that, let's talk about Marshall, Texas. 2008. Someone named Olson had reported about some fishermen that had an encounter in this area. Quote, Fishermen parked at the public ramp on Highway 43 in the Sabine River will often hear baws and screams on nights and during foggy days. Once while some fishermen were pulling their kayaks out of the river, it jumped on the hood of their truck and made a bawling sound at them. It would stand straight up to inhale and then lean forward to bawl. It was not aggressive sounding, more pitiful. One said it was four foot tall and the other said it was at least six feet tall. Dark shaggy fur like a mountain goat, but it was bipedal. 
It leapt from their truck, ran to a fence in the area, and leapt it. Then it ran up some stairs and onto a bridge. They could hear the sound of hooves running down it. It struck them to pull out their cell phones. They left their kayaks on shore, jumped in their truck, and drove down a bridge next to the bridge it was running on. They filmed as they slowly drove along it, but did not recover any evidence. In 2020, Reddit user wrote, quote, I always heard tales of Goatman growing up. Scared the hell out of me. One encounter I was told about was along the Sabine River, close to Kilgore and Longview. It seemed there's always bodies being pulled out of the river there as well. Besides the boat ramp in the Sabine River, there's Stagecoach Road, which is a hot spot for Goatman in the area. This photo was taken by Sunshine Paranormal in February of 2013, and they believe it's the spirit of a mother holding a child near where many sightings of the Goatman has taken place. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Like I said, the next ones coming up are going to be much more intense and way more interesting than this one. So be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and until next time, we're off on another adventure. God bless.